we come across uh, some cases about child abduction um, in China. Um, we have a lot of child abduction cases between Hong Kong and mainland China, and also um, emerging cases between mainland China and overseas countries. And uh, because uh, mainland China is still not a signatory country of the Hague Convention on Child Abduction, so if one of the parents takes the child to China, um, the Chinese government has no responsibility to help the other parent to send the child back to, the, to his country of habitual residence. So um, that caused a lot of problems because um, um, the other parent, uh, if they want to get the child back, he might need to go through a lot of legal procedures, which is time-consuming, stressful, might be costly, and still not guaranteed that the, he can get the child back. Um, because, and, and because usually it is the, uh, the wife, the Chinese woman, um, takes the child back to China. And the legal um, system in China kind of uh, protect the women more than the, than the men. So it's difficult for the other parent, uh, usually it's the husband, to get uh, the child back. Yeah, I, uh, I see there are more and more of these cases. It's because China is doing a lot of uh, business with other countries, and there are a lot of uh, uh, foreign people living in China, and more Chinese people um, living overseas, you know, it's getting more and more international. So I believe these cases will be uh, growing in the coming years. And, and because there's, well, um, I see there's no sign that the Chinese government will sign the Hague Convention shortly these years. And I believe it's because China is so big, it's, it's, it's too big, that uh, if a child is brought in China, while I think it's difficult for the Chinese government to look for the child um, and not even set, send him back to his uh, country of habitual residence. So it is hard. So, um, so that's why uh, if we see parents, if they're really worried, really have to keep an eye on the child. Thank you.